Now let me make up another multi-camera sequence using all this lot. So I've used lots and lots of cameras. Right click, create multi-camera source, and then I'm going to say make up a new sequence from that clip. You can see that I've got huge amounts of cameras in there now. Whether my computer can cope with it is another matter. I've got a very nice computer, but that is looking at that's a 6x8 grid there, which is 48 cameras. Can my computer playing HDV footage off of a regular hard drive cope with the 48 cameras at once? Answer, no, it can't. Really struggling. Maybe I can drop the resolution down, maybe it'll cope with that, although it's going to make it harder to judge what the pictures are. Eh, no, no, not quite managing to do that. That is because my computer can't cope with playing 48 clips at once, which is not unreasonable. But it can do more angles. If it runs out of pictures here, I mean, I managed to get 48 in one shot, I can actually come in here and there'll be different pages of them. If you've got 256 cameras, there'll be a couple of pages and you can pop between them to see the different angles. So that's another thing that's changed. You can do more cameras. It's basically supposed to be unlimited. I can drag through and do my multi-camera edit here, but there's no way I'm going to be able to play it because my computer can't cope with it. Now I'm going to go back to my original edit because there's a couple of other things I just want to mention. First off, a bit of colour correction I'd like to do on these clips. Well, now we have master effects on clips. So what I can do is go into my process clips bin and say find this shot of the sea and shove it up in the source. And what I'm going to do now is also bring up the effects control window and let's just drop it in between the two. So I've now got the source clip an effects control window for it and the multi-camera view over here. And I'm going to use a three-way color corrector just to adjust the color. What I want to do is do it on the master clip as opposed to the timeline. If I took it, dropped it on the timeline there, I could come into the effects window and adjust the color, but it wouldn't change it for the rest of the sequence. So I don't want to do that. I want to get to the master clip. Now when I was looking at master clips before, I would select the clip on the timeline and come up to the effects window and choose master, but it's not letting me because this isn't actually my media clip. This is a multi-camera clip. So instead I'm going to go to the bin, double click on it and put that up in the source, which I'd already done. Having done that, my effects window has now got the option of doing a master clip. I'm going to go to the list of effects, find the three-way color corrector and drop it in there. I'm then going to do some three-way color correcting. Let's make it look hideous so it's pretty obvious. Now I've affected the master clip, the main clip in the bin. So when I come to the timeline, you notice it's affected that clip and it's affected all the other times that clip is being used. So here we are, number 55 is being used down here as well. All the times that clip is used throughout this edit, it's now got that effect on it. Of course, if I'd used that clip somewhere else in the project, it would also have that effect on it. Using a master effect will actually put the effect on the clip every single time it's used in the project, which is what they're useful for, but obviously you've got to bear that in mind just in case you've used that clip somewhere else. I'm going to take that off and go and do color correction the way I used to do. The way I used to do it with multi-camera, because I didn't have master clip effects, was I've got a sequence inside of a sequence here. My multi-camera clip is a sequence. If I went into that, then what I could do is change the clip inside there and it would reflect all the way through the multi-camera clip. Probably easier to do it rather than explain it. First of all, I've got to find this multi-camera clip in the bin. Easiest way is right click on a clip and say reveal in project. And oh, there it's found it. It's this one here. Normally with a sequence, you would double click on it and it would open it up in the timeline. It doesn't do that in multi-camera clips. If you double click on a multi-camera clip, it puts you up here. So the way to open a multi-camera sequence is to right click on it and say open in timeline. And now what I've done is I've got to the original multi-camera edit, which makes up this clip here. So that means I can look at that and let's see 55 is this bottom one just here. Let's turn off the others by clicking on the little eye so I can see it. Go to the three-way color corrector, bang it onto the clip, do my jiggery pokery. So there we are, that's now affected that clip all the way through. And if I come back to the multi-camera edit, you'll notice that has affected every instance of that clip all the way through as well. And the difference between doing the color correction this way and using the master clip effects is this will only affect this clip in the multi-camera edit 
it doesn't affect the clip if you've used it somewhere else in the project. Both of them actually will achieve the same thing. Having uh, disabled all these tracks, I've got to turn them back on again, otherwise when I come back to the edit, they're not there. Yeah, a minute ago, the only clip I could see was this one because I disabled all the other tracks and turned them all the other tracks off in here. The other thing it's useful for is syncing up clips. Imagine I've got my multi-camera clip here that I've made in the timeline. I whack it down here, I start to do a cut, and you notice that, okay, I synced it up on the audio, but it hasn't done a good job. It didn't get it right. How do I fix it? Well, again, go to the multi-camera clip in the bin, right-click, open in timeline, and then you can do what we used to do in CS6, which is just manually move stuff around. So, you know, I can just drag these out so I can see them, and then maybe I can use the sound here to move these clips around and line them all up and manually sync them. See, I'm just picking this thing up and moving around with the mouse when I'm trying to resync stuff and I need to move things a frame at a time. I find it a lot easier to use the keyboard shortcut, which is to select the clip, hold down on the Alt key, and then use the arrows. If I zoom in a bit there, you can see what's happening. I'm keeping the finger on the Alt key, I'm using the right arrow to move it one frame to the right, and the left arrow to move it one frame to the left which is a lot more accurate than me you know, picking it up and moving it. Especially when snapping's on, you notice that it's snapping to the edge of the joins there. Obviously I could just turn snapping off, but actually if I use the keyboard shortcut, I don't have to worry about it because I can just shuffle things up and down the timeline quite easily and manually sync them up. You may have to do that if you've tried to get Premiere to automatically sync stuff up and it's fluffed it up.